What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about the most controversial dinosaur in existence of discovery up to this point in time, and that of course would be none other than the Spinosaurus. The dinosaur that has had so many bizarre and seemingly random bits of trivia and facts come out about it over the last couple of decades that the entire idea of what even is this animal has been turned on its head nearly every time new studies have been done on it. Of course, Having its status elevated to main dinosaur rival of the T-Rex in Jurassic Park 3 is what helped boost this thing into popular consciousness. But things have changed radically since 2001, and to say that not all paleontologists are in agreement on those things would be a massive understatement. So Spinosaurus is one of the largest theropod dinosaurs that has ever been recorded in the fossil record. It shares that stage with animals like Carcharodontosaurus, the Giga, and the tyrant lizard king himself, Tyrannosaurus rex. The last of which happens to always find itself fighting the Spinosaurus ever since Jurassic Park 3. but before that movie came out, the portrayal of the dinosaur was extremely different to say the least. You wouldn't have to go very far to find depictions of the animal before 2001 that were relatively small in comparison to other dinosaurs. And in fact, if you grew up reading a lot about dinosaurs like I did, you'll remember that a certain holographic book even featured the little dinosaur stuck in a cave in the 90s. He's like really small here. Now, the reason it was depicted so differently to what we eventually saw of it in Jurassic Park 3 is because we knew very little about the dinosaur all those years ago. In fact, one of the only Spinosaurus skeletons was destroyed during World War II in the middle of a bombing, and uh, for several long decades after that, we kind of had barely anything to go off of because of it. But things started to radically change with the dinosaur's introduction in the third Jurassic movie, where it was shown to not only be bigger than the T-Rex, but it could kill a T-Rex with relative ease, and even swim in what became popularized as a semi-aquatic lifestyle. Get up there and stop this that last little bit of information is currently a widely debated point of interest for modern paleontology, by the way, and I've had several conversations with different paleontologist friends of mine who really, and I do mean really, don't like the way Spinosaurus has been used over the last few years. And that's mainly because we know so little about this dinosaur, but it's still used as this kind of lightning rod for controversy whenever new studies are done because it's just so wildly popular. As soon as you say anything, scientists scientifically different or unique about a dinosaur that everyone knows about, you're immediately going to get a lot of attention. And Spinosaurus has really become the poster boy for that whole subject matter. Now, normally, you'd think that wouldn't really be that big of a problem. If dinosaur fans like us could deal with people calling T-Rex an exclusive scavenger in the 90s, then they shouldn't really have any problems with new research being done on the Spinosaurus at all. But it's really not that simple. Because you see, when I say that we know very little about Spinosaurus, I really mean we know very little about the animal like at all and when you're dealing with dinosaurs we're never really going to be able to see and study a living one so everything is purely based on speculation and theories to begin with but with an animal that is so rare and with so little information on it in the rock you're gonna have a lot of wildly different opinions for starters let's go over how this dinosaur radically changed in the last decade alone in 2014 there was a new bit of research done that redesigned the animal to move in a far more horizontal manner this redesign would eventually make its way into video games like Ark Survival Evolved, which I love, by the way. It's one of my favorite games, and I'm playing through a Jurassic Park mod of it right now, actually. But anyways, the new research that was done on Spinosaurus in 2014 basically changed the animal to become a much more docile looking creature with a brand new behavioral set. Essentially, by that point in time, paleontology had advanced to the idea that Spinosaurus was a dinosaur that had shorter hind limbs than we'd previously believed, which meant that they believed the animal may have actually been quadrupedal and walked on four legs instead of just two, which also meant that it wouldn't really have been that well adapted to land as we'd previously previously thought. 
They came up with this idea, by the way, by taking other specimens and kind of combining them to create a new animal, like a, a new complete skeleton structure idea, which obviously resulted in warnings from other paleontologists that, hey, this wouldn't really be as accurate as you'd think. But, you know, this new information began to change sometime around 2017, where we get this. New studies came out that stated that the dinosaur may have actually walked more upright, and some people even said that it leaned on its hands kind of like a, a gorilla. And no, I'm, I'm not joking. That, that was really, yeah. To dive into some of the more modern ideas of Spinosaurus, I'm actually going to directly show you guys Wikipedia. I know that it's not like an actual study thing, but they link to it, and I'm just going to read what's publicly available for you guys to, you know, see just how controversial this animal really is. So, a 2018 study by Donald Henderson, however, refuted the claim that Spinosaurus was semi-aquatic. There we go, one controversy right there. They studied the buoyancy in lungs of crocodilians and compared it to the lung placement in Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus, and they discovered that Spinosaurus could not sink or dive below the water surface. It was also capable of keeping its entire head above the water surface while floating, much like other non-aquatic theropods. So, the study found that Spinosaurus had to continually paddle its hind legs to prevent itself from tipping over onto its side, something that extent semi-aquatic animals do not need to perform. Henderson therefore theorized that Spinosaurus probably did not hunt completely submerged in water as previously hypothesized, but instead would have spent much of its time on land or in shallow water. By the way, j just to throw this out there, I always think it's odd that whenever we have a giant dinosaur, like one of the really big ones, we always have some study come out that says that, yeah, it would probably, like, not be very, you know, well adapted to do anything. Which, you know, I've heard about the T-Rex falling over and breaking every bone in its body and dying. It's like, I, I think the animal was a little more resilient than that, and I'm not a scientist, so I can look stupid if you want me to, but it is interesting that there's always some sort of handicap with a giant-sized animal in the fossil record. Wikipedia goes on to say that recent studies of the tail vertebra of Spinosaurus refute Henderson's proposal that Spinosaurus mainly inhabited areas of land near and in shallow water and that it was too buoyant to submerge. So right there, another controversy. They say that studies of the tail, thanks to specimens recovered and analyzed by Ibram, Pierce, Lauder, and Serino, and colleagues in 2018, indicate that Spinosaurus had a keeled tail that was well adapted to propelling the animal through water. The elongated neural spines and chevrons which run to the end of the tail on both dorsal and ventral sides indicate that Spinosaurus was able to swim in a similar manner to modern crocodilians, which is something that we've always said Spinosaurus looked a lot like, so uh, okay, there's a controversy on top of the controversy, but it sounds like it might be explained away. But it goes on further to say that through experimentation by Lauder and Pierce, the tail of Spinosaurus was found to have eight times as much forward thrust as the tails of terrestrial theropods like Allosaurus, as well as being twice as efficient at achieving forward thrust. The discovery indicates that Spinosaurus may have had a lifestyle comparable to modern alligators and crocodiles remaining in water for long periods of time while hunting. However, we have new information that says that Dr. David Hone and Dr. Thomas Holtz published a paper in January of 2021 in which they argue that the anatomy of Spinosaurus is more consistent with a shoreline generalist lifestyle rather than an active aquatic pursuit predator as suggested by Ibram. So, another debate. They highlight the positioning of the nostrils and orbits as one reason why a crocodile-like lifestyle is unlikely. They are ventrally positioned in such a way that the whole head would have to be lifted inefficiently out of water in order to breathe. Additionally, they argue that the general body shape of Spinosaurus is poorly adapted for this lifestyle, drawing on the amount of water drag and aquatic instability. And that's from the sail, as well as the rigid trunk and seemingly scarcely muscled tail. Hulkamania! <laughs> Dead. Animals like crocodiles require a flexible body in order to move through the water and make sharp turns when chasing prey. And this is directly contradicted by Dr. Hone and Dr. Holtz's findings. So you can already see right here, paleontologists do not agree about Spinosaurus like at all. A 2022 study by Fabiri made comparisons of Spinosaurus bone structure and compared it to that of Baryonyx and Suchomimus. Makes no sense to me, they're also dinosaurs in the Spinosaur family. The study revealed that Spinosaurus and Baryonyx had dense 
bones which allowed them to dive and pursue prey underwater. Compared to these, Suchomimus had more hollow bones, suggesting it preferred to hunt in shallow water. These findings also suggest that various spinosaur genera were more ecologically desperate than previously believed, as some were better suited to hunting in subaqueous environments than other closely related genera. In the same year, contradicting the study by Fabiri and colleagues, Sereno and his colleagues suggested that Spinosaurus was wholly bipedal on land and an unstable, slow-moving surface swimmer in deep water. Their results, taken from reconstructing a CT model of the skeleton and then adding internal air and muscles. These results coupled with fossils from Spinosaurus that showed it also lived further inland along rivers and lakes suggest it was a semi-aquatic ambush piscivore that preferred waterside environments both along the coasts and further inland along rivers and lakes. Simultaneously, they suggested that the large tail fin was probably utilized more for display than swimming. As tails and living... <laughs> oh god. As tails and living animals have the same function when they possess comparably tall neural spines. Uh, in the history of sports entertainment, no doubt about that. I gotta tell you, man, as someone who loves dinosaurs, however, is not paleontologically inclined as far as deep science, I didn't go to school or anything for it, it's kind of shocking to see all of these wild theories and claims and debates made about a dinosaur in the span of literally as long as I've been doing YouTube. It's wild. So to make a very long story short, the reason Spinosaurus is the most controversial dinosaur like ever is because so many new studies have come out about it in such a rapid succession that seemingly can not get everyone on board, by the way, that it's become an animal that doesn't really have a real identity anymore. During the 90s, it was known as this little dinosaur that was kind of like a Dimetrodon on two legs, and after Jurassic Park 3, it was known as the giant T-Rex killer that ran around the world and terrorized everything it could. After that, the animal literally couldn't catch a break, and every three or four years it underwent not only radical redesigns to what we thought the dinosaur looked like, but it's also an animal that constantly has its behavioral abilities wildly changing in real time. It's a dinosaur that is mainly known as a really big sailback creature that likes to swim. Everything other than that has kind of come into question and been debated over the years, and I think that's kind of wild to even think about. Personally, I know this is one of the most popular dinosaurs of all time, but when people really think about Spinosaurus, I think the ideas that usually jump into their heads is either the cloned creature from Jurassic Park 3 or the quadrupedal one from Ark Survival Evolved. Other than that, I don't know what to tell you, man. The research is still being done on this thing on a daily basis, and until the scientific community can come to a better agreement, Spinosaurus is going to stay the most controversial dinosaur and the one with no real solidified identity at all. Did it use that tail to paddle like a crocodilian? Was it on land a lot of the time? Did it move upright and bipedal? Was it quadrupedal? Did it like to attack big things underwater? Could it lift its head up above water? Well, a lot of people say a lot of different things. But hey, no matter what, you gotta admit, it always looks really cool. Get up there and stop this now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens and engine executives as well as all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. You've all helped my channel immensely and I'm incredibly grateful for all of that support. Now I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope that you enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you all consider subscribing. I'll see you all in the next video guys and as always, take it easy.